witches were a part of all my earliest nightmares. <laughs> and I wanted to create an archetypal New England horror story, and so it needed to be witches. I read the script, and it was the night before my audition, and I didn't sleep a wink that night. It scared the living daylights out of me. Someone's hungry. So visceral and real, and the emotions are so truthful, and Robert likes very natural acting. It's really <laughs> unique. Aside from the extreme intelligentsia, in the early modern period, the, the real world and the fairy tale world were the same thing. So what was really interesting is that I would find the same tropes, the same stories in folk tales and fairy tales as I would in accounts of historical witchcraft and in trials. So that was really cool to really understand that everyday people, they thought the little old woman down the lane that they were saying, that's a witch. Like they really thought that she was flying around on a broomstick and kidnapping children and grinding them up and turning them into ungents and things. When you meet this family, you meet them at a time where things are just changing so dramatically for them, and actually our Puritan ways are crumbling and crumbling. By the end, we've come such a circle. Lots of families have big decisions to make what you do, and it usually tends to be what one person wants to do, and the other people go, right, we'll do it because it's what you want to do. Thomas in. And I've really enjoyed playing a Puritan, actually, and I've really enjoyed exploring and actually finding out that I'm a little bit of a <laughs> slightly Puritan myself, I don't know. You just get the sense that everybody believes in God and they all pray to him and they all believe that if they pray to God, they're going to get a good life. Show me mercy. Show me that light. I really felt that it was crucial to have the entire world be as accurate as possible to the 17th century because we really needed to believe in this world and be super grounded in it so that we could believe in the witch. The setting is a character in itself, a very important character. When you're walking across a courtyard at night and there are woods framing every side of you, you can't see anything and the house is so dark and not really that homely inside, you can really just imagine people living in this all the time and losing their heads. In trying to recreate this authentic idea of what 17th century New England would be, we had to kind of make everything. The family's farm was constructed from scratch. The clabbards that like sheathed the house, the siding, no one in Canada knew how to make those correctly, so we had to find a guy in Massachusetts who knows how to hand rive oak clabbers and we had to have them uh, shipped up. And this same kind of detail went into the costumes. Uh, Linda Muir did an, an incredible job with those. The costumes are so amazing, the sets are so amazing, the crew are amazing. The witch of the early modern period, the 17th century witch, the Puritan witch, she's a lot darker, a lot more primal, a lot scarier than we ever would have imagined. At the time, women were being hanged and burned, and it was really frightening. So it's not like, oh my goodness, there's a witch in the wood, or oh, it was as real and visceral, and she's frightening. I love all sorts of magic, and I, I still believe in it. I, I don't care that it's not politically correct or whatever to say that witches and things like that exist, but I 100% believe it. What's that? Thomason was very much based on Elizabeth Knapp, who was a woman in Massachusetts in the mid-17th century who was a teenager who was having a lot of fits and things. And I, I truly believe that she thought that she was possessed by the devil. It's like she's got this fire that's growing within her at all times, but she's constantly dousing it with the cold reality of her situation. And add to that the fact that the whole family's quite afraid of her burgeoning sexuality. It means that she's a bit of an outcast. Something that I loved about Anya, and it was clear, like, oh gosh, like she has to play this, is because she just could never be a Puritan. It just wouldn't work. And this is Thomason. I'll be the witch of the wood. 
Liar. We experience this film through the children's eyes, particularly Thomas, and, and they're learning about this world and learning about how to like grow up and be a good Puritan. And because th that world is so exotic and strange for us, we're very aligned with her in how she's sort of becoming herself in a human way that we can understand more. Catherine's a really wonderful lady, actually. A strong, really strong woman who supports her husband's decisions, looks after the children. And as you go through the film, you see some of those strengths a lot, and then you see her vulnerability. She's a, such a real person. We should never have left the plantation. Kate. Kate just brought all these nuances to her and all of these softer beats. And, you know, Catherine's not a bad person. I think that's the important thing about this family, is that none of us are bad people. The best of us is Caleb, 100%, because he's just good. He's probably the most well-hearted character in the film, but he's the one that gets sort of hurt the most. Why are you children outside? What does this to me? What does this? We're all looking at each other. You get to a point and none of us trust each other. Goats was the most nightmarish experience I've ever like had. Black Phillip did not care that I wanted to make this film, and I totally respect that, and I appreciate any cooperation that uh, he gave us, but, I mean, it was so much worse than I ever thought. They're goats. I mean, they're goats. The one I really enjoyed was actually ch when I actually did chase the goat with a stick. The first time I was going to do it, I was scared in case he was going to run the run, uh, wrong way and we was the one ended up getting chased rather than the goat. <laughs> but once we did it the second time, it was actually quite fun. I have to keep reminding myself that Robert's... This is his first feature because the script's so amazing and not only that, when you work with him, he knows it so well that any questions you have, anything you need to know, he's got the answer, so you feel you're in really, really safe hands. This witch is still very much alive in the unconscious of everyone today. Like, she absolutely is. And, you know, by, like, spending the time to go back and understand what the archetype is and, like, why it's actually scary and why it's actually powerful and how it connects to us, like, on an essential human level, I think audiences today are going to be shocked by how, like, potent and surprising it is. I keep forgetting that there's a witch because I see this as a story about the deterioration of a family. Yeah, it's been an amazing experience, really, to be kind of involved in the whole creative process of the film and, and be involved start to finish has been, a, has been great for me. I've really enjoyed it. This family of Puritans, like, they've become my Puritan family and I really, I really love them and it was, uh, it was really fun. Yeah.